So one of the main reasons why the reptile industry is growing so exponentially as it has been the last few years is because of reptile breeding. Everybody wants to breed reptiles, and I am absolutely guilty of it too, obviously. But when it comes to breeding, there's a lot that goes into it. And, you know, I've discussed like the moralities and, you know, the good things and the bad with it in previous videos. And if you want, you can check those out. I'll try to remember to put the links up right here for those. But what it really comes down to, once you've decided that you want to take on the onerous proposition of breeding reptiles, there are two main things that everyone really focuses on. And that is either breeding specific species and localities or breeding designer animals like Mesa Verde here, who is a bamboo calico yellow belly ball python, which is a whole mouthful, but that's obviously a designer reptile. So I just wanna talk a little bit about kind of the pros and cons of both of those today. So that way, if you decide you wanna start breeding your reptile collection or pets or whatever may have you, you can have a little bit more of an informed decision because I'm not gonna tell you what to breed. Because again, we've talked about that in previous videos. Well, we're gonna start off with, because she's in my hand, we're gonna talk about the designer breeding or breeding for morphs is another one too. So across the species of whatever you decide you wanna breed, I'm gonna stick with ball pythons and then use a couple other ones a little bit down the road as examples. You're breeding for a specific look. That's the designer part. With ball pythons, it's almost primarily and entirely due to morphs. Although now there's starting to be a bit of a shift, myself included, where people are starting to select certain aspects of those morphs and breeding for those characteristics. And we'll get to that in, in, a, in a second. So basically one of the pros of breeding for these cool things like this is that it gets new people interested in the hobby in general and into the industry of breeding reptiles as well. This thing just looks super cool. She is an amazing, beautiful looking animal that doesn't look anything like a, you know, a wild looking, a wild type morph of ball python. It looks very cool. And when you think about all the genes and morphs and genetics that are involved with all of the ball pythons and lots of other species of snakes, then there's a lot to do, which is really fun and creative for people, which is another aspect of it. It's very creative. It's fun to be able to play Frankenstein with all of the morphs and create all the different combos or breeding with other animals like say for instance green tree pythons you get into I want to breed for the bluest animal the darkest animal the one that has the most dark spots and flecking that I want to breed one that is pure green with absolutely no flecking whatsoever it's really cool to do that and to play like I said Dr. Frankenstein and it's really fun another good thing about it is that once you start breeding for you know specific colors and morphs and genetics then that takes a lot of stress off of the exportation and collection of wild animals around the world that's one of the big things that's kind of really taboo and you know really just kind of it's very debated right now i should say not to put too fine a point on it it's very contested right now about the importation of wild animals with ball pythons it's almost I mean, you don't really need to do it anymore. Regular mutations are popping up in the literal millions that are in this country anyway on their own without having to rely on the exportation of wild ball pythons. And that goes the same for a lot of other species of snakes too. When you're breeding for specific looks and morphs, then you don't have to bring in wild animals because you're breeding with domestic animals in general, which is better for the hobby, I think, long term. But I'm not going to get into that too much. Sorry. Um, now... With all that being said, there are some cons to that. So I'm gonna do, that was the pros, all of those fun things, now the cons. The cons with these is that it kind of creates this artificial market to where, yes, no matter what you do, if you're buying an animal, either a snake, a hamster, a dog, beer dragon, whatever, we're attributing a value to that animal. When we're breeding these designer things, it's we're essentially assigning a value because what we think looks pretty or determined to be valuable assigns the value to that animal. So it essentially creates this artificial market where if you think about it a little too long, you end up getting kind of skeeved out a little bit. And even that happens with me quite a bit of time when I'm doing like reptile presentations and things, or even when I'm talking to people at shows when they ask, why does this piebald ball python cost so much more than this normal looking one? And then it's because of this perceived value that we have, which again, inherently it goes with any type of animal or really anything that we have in society, but it seems extra when we come to thinking about designer animals and things like that, which is not great. The other con 
about this, because I'm going to try not to be too negative about really anything as much as possible, is that there can be an issue with essentially inbreeding with these things. So when we're chasing that new morph, proving out genetics, or trying to get the darkest animal, the whitest animal, the pinkest animal, the brightest one, whatever may have you, you end up going into line breeding, which is kind of part of the designer and morph breeding, which is you want to take whatever project you are, say for instance, I want to get a bamboo that's as silver as possible. So I take the most silver looking bamboo and I pair it with the most silver looking bamboo. So the fastest way to do that sometimes is to breed back sons, daughters, back to mothers, fathers, uncles, cousins, and in doing so, you get that goal faster, but that leads to inbreeding down the line. And we've seen that happen a lot. Think about German Shepherds, where their hips now slope down so much where it's a breed standard. And that's not really great for the health and longevity of the breed. The same thing with these snakes, too. When you think about the albino ball pythons, they're very prone to a lot of genetic disorders because we've so rapidly bred the albino python where you have to really try to outcross as much as possible to avoid those things. With reptiles, they have a little bit more kind of insulation to that versus a lot of mammals and things, but it's still there, absolutely, as I said, with the albino, with ball pythons and similar things like that with like the some types of bearded dragons and leopard gecko morphs and things like that. So those are the cons and the pros of breeding designer animals. Now I want to talk about the other kind is the locality or species breeding. So this, I haven't shown off too much, is a Baja Cape gopher snake. So think about like, you know, the bull snakes and the and the gopher snakes. This guy is in the same genus Pichuophis, but he's not a bull snake or gopher snake. These guys are found in Baja, California, hence the Baja Cape, because it's a cape, the Baja Cape gopher snake. These guys are really cool and not too many people breed them. So this goes into what I said before about the locality or specific species. So when, when doing that, you're not breeding for specific colors. And while yes, it's fun to get ones that are this super bright orange, and sometimes we do try to do that, but we're mostly breeding for the species to continue to propagate it or for specific localities or whatever may have you about those. So for instance, with boas, there's the, the boa imperators that some people still call the BCIs, which is whatever, or the boa constrictors, the true red tail boas. Inside of the true red tail boas, there are multiple subspecies, the Argentines, the true red tails, the Bolivians, whatever may have you. And then inside of those are specific localities, the Brazilians, the uh, Guyanas, the Surinams, and each of those people will specifically breed and try to keep separate to ch achieve specific things. And with that, you're going for specific location of animals that look, behave a certain way, and that's what we're trying to continue on. And same with these guys. These guys do have morphs. There are some that are patternless, or it's just kind of this like unilateral thing. There's a hypo of them as well. But for the most part, we're still trying to stick with specific localities and species. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of that. So the pro, as we all already kind of, you know, dabbled into a little bit, is we're keeping their natural beauty for the most part. And yes, again, there are some morphs and stuff that could tie into that. But this is an animal that if you were to go down to Baja, California and start going around some of the rocky, you know, kind of plainsy, high plains deserts there, and you start flipping rocks, this is an animal that you will find that looks like that. And there is 100% true beauty in the animals that look exactly how they're found in the wild, including ball pythons. I have, normal, I have several just normal ball pythons that I think are absolutely beautiful that I like more than some morphs. And there's nothing wrong with that. And a lot of people do like that look and they want to preserve that. And so that's why people will continue to breed for that specifically. The other part is, is kind of this idea somewhat of the invisible arc that we've talked about a little bit, which is, you know, if something horrible happens and we end up losing a species in the wild, there will still be a population of true genetically, ident not identical, but true genetically pure animals that if something were to happen, the potential for re-release into the wild and re-establishing populations is there. And while keeping with a lot of people in captivity doesn't overlap a whole lot, but with people who keep them and breed them in captivity helps add to the knowledge base of how to care for them, as well as kind of helping keep track of bloodlines and localities, which is really, really cool. So that's the pros of this. The con of this, which is also similar to one of the ones with the designers, which is it can be prone to inbreeding. 
when animals come in and we stop or and we're no longer allowed to import them from different you know places around the world then we're stuck with a very limited bloodline i.e any animal from australia a lot of animals coming out of madagascar now are starting to not be allowed to be exported anymore as well as other other species which means that no matter where you are if you're in the u.s the uk germany the netherlands wherever you are sticking you are stuck with a limited bloodline and so if you already have a limited bloodline or limited amount of animals and you're trying to stick with very specific ones then the idea and the you know outcome and potential of inbreeding and implications with that also becomes a bit of a risk just like with the designers because you're trying to stick to what what you want and what is there and if you're limited that's what it is which isn't great and then the other con is is still the legal exportation of these animals and unfortunately sometimes the illegal exportation of these animals you're taking animals out of the wild and there is a need to a degree yes but that's a conversation for a different video but with that being said with the designer animals they're all captive bred for the most part then you're dealing with a species that you don't have to have any stress of them in the wild and you are wrapping up on me really tight right now aren't you little boy and then but when it comes to the localities you're still dealing with wild collected animals so just to kind of really wrap it up and kind of insulate it for a quick little typing at the end basically are you wanting to breed for something that looks really pretty and you're going for a particular project either it be a combo morph or very specific like pink orange dark animals whatever may have you or are you trying to go for an animal that you really like how it looks naturally and that's what you want to try to breed to add to that to contribute to that be it a specific locality or a specific species like this guy here who again doesn't have a name but i think he's really cool and i need to find a girlfriend for him so with the designers you know it's it adds to the market it's very creative it brings new people in because they're these very striking cool pretty doesn't even look real animals but it also, there are very prone to inbreeding. It's this kind of weird, like almost moral gray area when it comes to the artificial market and assigning values to things and bleh. And then when you want to breed for the actual animals themselves, it's you're preserving something in nature. You're helping add and contribute to animals that, you know, if something were to happen in the wild, then maybe, and again, absolutely terrible if it were to happen, that we can maybe add to the reintroduction of those animals keeping what it is in nature pure and just like keeping it the way it is there is 100 percent beauty in that which is why i definitely have had more of a shift from the pure morph to doing this as well but again the negative part of that is the exportation of them which isn't great for wild populations and you're also kind of dealing with inbreeding possibilities as well too but whatever that you decide to choose and again for breeding we've talked about and in previous videos, the moralities of those things and whatever may have you. If you're gonna decide to take on breeding, you've done the research, you know what's gonna happen if you can't sell the babies, you're looking for specific people where they're gonna go to, and you now can decide what you want to breed starting with the type of animal, now you can think about the pros and cons of which kind you want to go down the path of, or maybe a little bit of both like me because you can't just stick with one thing because, you know, what's the fun in that anyway hope you enjoyed this video hope you're having a great day please like and subscribe if you can i have lots of reptile content out there if you want to see or hear anything specific let me know down in the comments hope you're having a great day and we'll check you next time